Hello everybody, my name is Virkslav Kiddely and today I'm going to show you my water drop condensation texture that I created in 3D Studio Max. Uh, I basically decided to create the texture because I couldn't find a good texture online uh, to use for droplets. I even tried, of course, various, various things as using scattering plugins, uh, even teamed up with a friend who is using Houdini and the result just wasn't quite there. Uh, what, I was, what I was missing generally is that uh, nature element because every drop has its logic in the nature how it will form uh, what are all the other drops around it going to do so the only way to create a realistic logic texture thing was basically to find a good reference of condensation on the internet so I did that uh, placed it in my 3 Studio Max uh, I modeled around 20 different types of droplets and I started placing them one by one. I ended up with placing over 9,000 uh, droplets by hand and uh, the, result, the result was quite satisfying I must say. So here in the example you can see uh, the bottle that I have an, uh, as an example here it has my drops texture on it uh, but first let me show you the, the textures. Um, so this is generally, let's call it a main texture thing, right? So here uh, you have this variant. Uh, on the other hand, I'm offering uh, this variant with alpha channels. So this one has, as you can see, some sharp edges on it. Uh, on the other hand, I'm offering a version uh, with slight blur. Why is there a no blur and blur option? Because sometimes I just need that soft blend with the surface. So that's why I created also this blurry version. On the other hand, I'm offering also a normal map. So, um, right, and, 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 and I almost forgot. And the second thing I'm offering is also, you can purchase my 3ds Max file, file where I created uh, my drops texture. Uh, so you can make your own, you can change the resolution, whatever you, you, you desire, it's here. All the objects are instances, so you can do a lot of modifications here as you like. Uh, <coughs> it's all, by the way, being offered on my uh, Gumroad. Uh, the link will be in the description below. So you have here only maps texture, and here you have... Uh, the one with the 3ds max file in it uh oh by the way today is black Fli black friday well technically it's tomorrow but it doesn't matter for the sake of this video uh so the prices are 50 percent off so this one is usually 50 dollars uh and this one is usually 30 dollars so how did i uh apply my texture that's the question i've been asked uh, to explain so I, for this uh, video, I've been using uh, F-Storm, uh, but of course you can use this in, in any other rendering engine as you like. You can use it in V-Ray, in Corona, in, uh, in Redshift, uh, Octane, whatever do, do you prefer. So what I basically did here is I have um, my main bottle object, and then I have my label object on it. And then I added a third object, that is the object for drops. Uh, how did I add that third object? It's basically here, you can see it. Uh, this is my droplet object. I'm going to refresh the render so you can see what happens. Why did I, why did I decide to create an extra object for the droplets? It's basically because drops are not part of the bottle. So I decided to separate them to get better results. Uh, okay, let's go back. So, how did I create that uh, drop object? Well, I basically took my... Um, okay, so let's clone this here and I'm going to show you an example uh, of what I did. So, I basically took my bottle, I cloned it one more time, and then uh, I added a slight push modifier to it. Now, this push modifier will enable me to distance, uh, distance my uh, drops from the bottle. So the, the value for the push modifier, modifier was something extremely low. 
like 0 0.0012 centimeters. It's basically like this. Simple extrusion. Uh, and then uh, what I had to do was put an edit poly on it. I deleted the cap and si since it's the whole object of the bottle, I don't want any drops inside my bottle. Uh, so I just deleted the inner part of the bottle. So here I ended up with just the outside of the bottle. Okay, uh, so since I've been in a commercial industry for many years and I've seen many professional shootings of uh, products and everything, what they tend to do when they are, for example, shooting a, uh, a pr for example, a, a bottle, you know, with with, with, cond with condensation and everything, they tend to wipe off the drops from the back of the bottle, because the refraction when when you see those dro those drops in the back, that reflection can, in a lot of cases, have bad results. Clients don't like it. So what I basically did here is. I selected my backside of this bottle and deleted it. So that way I have my droplets that, that, that you can see here and on the back I have the clear bottle. If you don't want to delete your mesh and you have, a, for example, a rotating camera, uh, you can use a slice modifier for this example. Uh, you put a slice, you say remove bottom it will do this. So when your camera rotates, you can basically just animate this uh, depending on the camera view. It, it will not, of course, rotate the object. It will just rotate the cut of the object. So I created a material that I put it on this uh, cut it uh, drops object and I applied it. So now I'm going to show you how does that material uh, m material look. One second, let me just enable the rendering here. Oh, I'm in orthographic view. Okay. So it's basically like this. So what I did when I select this object, you can see that I have push, I have a few slices. Uh, I don't remember wh what was the second slice. I think for the um, upper part of the bottle, maybe. Yep, it's for the upper, uh, upper part. Okay, so I also have displacement on the bottle. So how does my water texture look? So when it comes to material, it's, it's basically nothing simple. The, the main material is water. So white reflection, white refraction, uh, IOR is at 1.6, you can put any other value that you desire, but 1.6 is water-like IOR. Uh, so uh, I have my basic water. I don't have any bumps here or anything. It's, it's just a basic water or glass material as, as, as you like. But my drops texture is loaded in a displacement here. So as you, as you can see here, uh, I have it loaded. Uh, for this case, I have drops height blur version loaded in. Uh, the only thing that I had to do with this material is uh, mix it with the other material that has opacity zero. Uh, as you can see, opacity is zero here, and they are controlled by the alpha channel, alpha channel of my drops height blur map. So, how does this look when you isolate this? So, it's basically like this. Uh, one second. Having technical issues here. Okay, so how does the, this look? It's just simple water drops, and between them there's nothing because we have this opacity zero here. I could put the whole uh, that drop object to be water or glass or whatever you want to call it, uh, but the main reason is. Oftentimes you have a frosted bottle, for example, and then if you put that um, sharp reflection refraction thing all uh, over it, you're gonna lose all the blurry frosted parts. So that that's why I have uh, th this thing where I always uh, separate my drops uh, with the uh, zero opacity material. So let's open up my bottle here. 
here you can see how my drops behave. Uh, I think they look really okay. Uh, this is not a perfect project for demonstrating this. This was something quick that I found laying around. Um, yeah, I basically wasn't prepared <laughs> for making a video like this. Uh, but as you can see, that, that's how they behave. You control them, you control their height with uh, displacement here. So, for example, if I set a lower displacement value... Uh, one second. Oops. Oh yeah, I need to refresh it. If I set the lower value, the drops are going to be lower. If I, if I set the higher value, uh, the drops are going to be higher, of course. In this case, spiky, extreme higher. So you don't want to have a result like this. Um, okay, uh, let me show you just a few more parts of the, of the bottle to, to, to demonstrate how it works. Uh, okay, so for example here, where we have uh, the label part. Uh, Okay, the only thing that FStorm render, which I'm using currently for this, is lacking is caustics. Because uh, some nice caustics would really fit here. Um, in the real world, you would see that white light in every drop, but here you just don't see it because FStorm doesn't support it. I hope Andre will um, implement that feature, uh, feature in, the, in, in the near future. But okay, until then, this is what I have. Um, this texture can be used uh, for any other rendering engine that you use, as long as it basically uses bump or displacement, you are good to go to use this texture. Uh, all textures are made in 16 bit. Uh, uh, bit uh, so generally displacements will uh, have a really good interaction with them. So you're covered. In, uh, on that part. Here I can show you also how does the texture behave when there is just a glass. For example here on the neck. It's just a normal behavior. Also I got a, a, a lot of questions about uh, is my texture seamless. Uh, yes and no. Uh, technically no it is not seamless. Uh, but I'm really having a hard time to locate some seams anywhere uh, all from uh, every person that bought this texture and I, I think I had I don't know quite a few of them um, nobody complained about the seamless part of the texture so I guess uh, it's okay you can find it if you search for it of course you will try you will be able to locate it but you know if you are looking at this whole mess of drops where there is millions of them, well, technically 9,700 of them, uh, you won't be able to find a seam. Uh, okay, maybe this is a seam. Maybe. Because you see how this drop is cut out. Maybe this is a seam. But I doubt that anyone will see that as a problem. Uh, yeah, I mean, basically that's it. This is how I created my drops texture. Uh, you can improve this uh, method even further. This is not the best method. There are always better methods. Everything can be done better and faster. Uh, if you want to, for example, uh, create a frosted bottle. Uh, so, for example, let me just put some frosted material here. Uh, I'm basically just going to blur out everything. Uh, let's go this, let's go this. Okay, so you have a kind of frosted thing here. What would you want to consider uh, upgrading to this method is basically um, use this uh, mate material, this frosted material of glass, and mix it with another material of glass that has clear re reflection and refraction. And you can divide all that with this alpha channel. So what are you generally trying to achieve with that? You can basically create a thing where you have the frostiness all over, but, through, uh, but when you look through the simple drop, um, you will see the clear bottle behind it. Because behind the drop is nothing frosted, it's clear. So you can basically use that second mix map or something to 
uh, simulate uh, more realistic effects on this. Uh, you, you can also use this as a bump. Uh, I don't have a scene set ready for bumpiness right now, so I cannot show it. But generally, this is how I use the texture. You can also put the bump texture directly on the water bottle. Sorry, beer bottle in this example, or champagne bottle, or whatever it is. You can do that. But, you know, if, if your bottle is green, you're going to get green droplets. Maybe if your bottle is white, uh, the result might be actually nice. Uh, but anyhow, the thing is, that's, you know, the stuff that you have to test out. Oh yeah, you, you can see the cutout here uh, in the top. That's from the slice where I cut out my texture. Anyhow, that's it. This is my water drop tex texture condensation short tutorial. Uh, I hope you liked it. Um, if not, I hope you learned something. If not, thank you for watching. Uh, and I hope that I maybe record something else in the future. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, have a nice day and goodbye.